Design Your Life 2017. Wow. Who can even believe we're having that conversation? You know, seriously, I can't believe it. <laughs> I cannot believe it. 12 months, 2016, it rolled over, it's come, and it is going away. And so today I really want to visit with you about designing your 2017 with great intention and with great success. So thank you for getting on with me. I'm Pamela Shaw. I am the author of Design Your Life 90 Day Planner. I'm an executive national sales director with Mary Kay. I am uh, excited about investing in you today. So thank you for the time that you've set aside for me. Hey, first of all, I want to give a big shout out to all of you using my planner. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oops. I've got notes. I've got sticky notes all over mine. In fact, guess what? I have six more days in my planner and I've got to do a new one. Uh, you know what? Even after all these years, I'm still like, oh, the, the, the good and the bad of starting a new planner. You know, the excitement of a fresh book. I mean, every Everybody loves a fresh blank book and I do too but then when you fill all that stuff out in the beginning it's time-consuming but that is the process that's gonna take you from where you are to where you're going so to all of you who are using it and sending me your success stories I cannot tell you how overjoyed overwhelmed excited thrilled gratified um, I have been hearing your stories of success and so keep those coming feel free to post them in this chat um, and I would love to have some of them um, on PamelaShaw.pink so if you've got a story about your past 90 days that's been a success where you know that the process has been supportive to you write me a paragraph send me a JPEG picture I would love to post it on our website you know, sometimes the way you use it or something you found out about it is the catalyst to open up the door for somebody else to use it better because it is designed your life. It's not just the way that I use it. And so thank you for that. And congratulations. Your, uh, your Voxer messages, your Facebook messages, your private messages, your email messages, your texts. I have loved getting them because since I did the first training um, live on Facebook back in September, I cannot tell you how many stories I've heard of this was the thing that made the difference. So a big shout out to you um, who are willing to make a change and do something different. That's the big thing. You know, you got to make a change and do something different. So the feedback from the last live is that there was great progress and that there is great process. And some of you are starting on your next 90 days. And what a great time to start your next 90 days. So today what we're going to do is we're going to lock in on some groundwork. I'm going to do a... Um, long hour hour and a half New Year's goal setting session Monday December 26th the Monday after Christmas so that today I'm gonna give you an assignment at the very end you're gonna have time to work on that and then come back to the session on the 26th a long one so you're gonna have to schedule some time to spend with me um, but instead of doing a live uh, workshop somewhere in some city, I'm going to do it right from here, and then all of you can come. And it's you and me for free, so why not, right? If you think what I'm getting ready to say about designing your life and living your vision um, is going to be supportive to a friend of yours, would you share this right now? Just go ahead and hit the share button and share it to your wall so that your friends and family members can visit and... Um, Hopefully, it'll be beneficial to them as well. If you haven't already, go to PamelaShaw.pink and register. Um, I'm going to start doing some private Facebook messages for those of you who are actually using the book. I mean, a lot of this is just its generic information, whether you're using my planner or something else. Um, but I talk about the process of my planner because there was a, a reason behind the way it got built. So if you haven't yet, go to PamelaShaw.pink and register because I will do some private Facebook um, lessons for, for just you, for those of you who are using the book. Okay, let's jump in. All right, here's the deal. Increased success, personal growth, it is intentional. It does not accidentally happen for anyone. It is not reactive. It does not come to you. Increase, increased success, personal growth, advancement, it is intentional. You've got to go after it. It will not come to you. That means that however you're going about gaining success, you have got to be, one, thoughtful about it, two, strategic about it, and three, you've got to have systems that support you in creating new habits to get there. So in order to have more success, it's got to be intentional. It is not accidental. It is not reactive. It will not come to you. 
It has got to be thoughtful. That's what I'm going to invite in you today. It has got to be strategic. There has got to be a game plan. And there are systems that you repeat, that you can repeat over and over to make sure that it happens. So, it's December. Chapter 12 of a 12-chapter book is coming to a close. How did the book of your 2016 read? Answer this question. Answer, finish these sentences. In 2016, I accomplished blank. In 2016, I overcame blank. In 2016, I created the habit of, what did you do? In 2016, I took a promotion to, what did you do? In 2016, I had a victory over blank. Or do you not have anything really good to fill in those blanks? I mean, it could be something else. In 2016, whatever you did, you know, uh, I lost weight. I got out of debt. I started creating wealth. I took a promotion. I had a baby. I, uh, you know, cared for uh, a friend. I cared for a parent. I grieved. I mean, there are a lot of things you could put in the blanks. But in 2016, what would the book of your year read? Or are you more in the mindset of, it was kind of the year like the year before? Are you asking yourself, where did the year go? You know, I meant to blank. I thought I would have blank. I said that I would blank. Now, if it reads that way, okay, don't stay there. That's okay. It's okay. Because you know where we are? We're today. We're here from this point moving forward. From here moving forward. So don't stay there because there is no room for blame or shame or guilt or just there's no room for it. That will take chapter one out of your 2017 book and we're not going to do that. Chapter one is going to be a bam chapter. It's going to be a power chapter. It's going to be a launching pad for your 2017. There are people that I run across occasionally, not you or you wouldn't be on here. There are people I run across occasionally who say, you know, I don't set New Year's resolutions anymore. I don't set goals anymore. I just, you know, people who set goals don't accomplish them. They just depress you and okay, well, until that doesn't work for you anymore and you're sitting in the rocking chair of regret, <laughs> I don't think that's a great idea. The people who do set goals, they are the small percentage of people who account for massive success. And so the more years you allow yourself to um, stay in the same place, the more years that you allow to accumulate without creating urgency, see, without creating urgency and taking action towards a specific outcome, the more likely you are of remaining the same. The more likely you are of remaining the same. So for me, about... Gosh, 20 years ago, um, I realized the magnitude of my goal would never just slide me into home plate. I realized that the goal that I wanted to accomplish at that time, and at that time that was becoming a national sales director with Mary Kay, I realized that that goal was not going to come to me. I could do the same things over and over and I could collect success. I could uh, collect a lot of success, but I couldn't hit that benchmark without being extremely strategic. And that's when the Design Your Life Planner started to unfold. Because as much success as I had had, and I had in life, in relationships, in finances, in business, in education, I had had a lot of success. But I knew that this goal would elude me if I did not go after it aggressively. So I had to change the way I was doing certain things. I had to get very strategic with my day, with my habits, with my focus. So if this is something that sounds like it might benefit one of your friends or family members or coworkers, then hit the share button because I'm getting ready to dig in a little bit deeper. It was 20 years ago when I first started playing around with the concepts of the Design Your Life Planner. I had worked from every date book imaginable. I had worked from Franklin Planner. I had worked from Daytimer. I had worked from a lot. If it was out there, I had worked with it. If the notebook existed, I had bought it. And so what I realized is that it wasn't the planner. It was not the date book. It was who I was becoming. It was the habits. It was the day-to-day -day discipline. It was the person of Pam Shaw that had to really invest in growing to who God was designing me to be. Now, let me quick, quick interjection. I am not there yet. <laughs> I am not there yet. I am still growing. I'm still improving. In fact, sometimes I look at my own planner and I'm like, gosh, I left out like 
four steps, you know, for four months. And now I wonder why I'm kind of stuck or why I let some I forgot about something or I didn't follow up. We are all always on the pathway of learning. I am, you are, we all are. So, but this evolved uh, in that window of time when I knew I had to get more strategic and more systematic. So here's the deal. This planner is not for you. The process is not for you. The planner is not for you if you're not serious about a specific outcome or promotion, a specific improvement, uh, an, an earning amount, or an accomplishment or a win. It's not for you if you're not serious and sold out for that. If you just want to play around with goals, it's probably not for you. The planner is not for you if you value feeling good over the discomfort of growth. If you'd rather feel good than dig in there and get the discomfort of growth, it's not for you. And neither, probably, neither is a big goal. Okay. The planner is not for you if you feel like your comfy habits, if you feel like keeping your comfortable habits more than you value changing them and improving. It's not for you if you're trapped and committed to a traditional date book. It's, it's not for you. So quickly, let me say this. Quickly, 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 let me say this. That I'm not promoting a planner here. I mean, certainly you can get one and I'm happy to share it. And I'm, I'm happy to have it available at what I think is a price that's worth sharing. This is more about a process than a planner. See, you can do the process without the planner. It's just that most people won't. The planner aids the process. So most people won't, and that's why. So here's the truth. Most of you know your schedule and your appointments this week. You've got a date book. It's either on your phone and in a hard copy calendar. You know your appointments for the week, for the month, and probably for the quarter and maybe for the year. Scheduling appointments is one component to success. But alone, appointments or the number of appointments, it's not a catalyst to the pathway for accelerated success. So this is not just about a date book where you know where your appointments are and where you're supposed to be. That is just one tiny element. You know, scheduling appointments, having appointments, that's one component to success. Being on time to your appointment, knowing when it is and what time you need to be there, uh, that's a great success habit and it's a great courtesy to other people. But it's not the key to accelerated success. And so, as many of you have shared with me already what you've experienced, it's the process of thinking through your comprehensive life, your dreams, your wish list, your mission statement, who you are, your why, develop your identity, your, your limitations, God's clear-cut vision for your life, um, your habits, your affirmations, your systems for your list of things to do, and the day-to-day -day activities. That's what most of you have shared with me. It's the process of acknowledging and staying focused on those. See, here's this. I promise you, I'm leading you to an assignment. I'm not just rambling, and I'm not just talking about the planner or the process. I'm leading you to an assignment. The process of thinking to get you there is going to be the assignment. So if you're just joining me, I'm Pamela Shaw. I'm talking about how to design your life. We're talking about doing it in 90-day segments. And we're looking at 2017 just around the corner. So as we look back to 2016 and we ask the questions of how did it go and what did I accomplish, we're also looking forward to 2017 saying it is going to be a year that I own. It is a year. It is going to be a year that I take charge and I initiate. And it's going to be the year of and you get to design your life. You get to design it. So, um, okay. Without beating yourself up, without blaming yourself, I have to ask, based on the way you are doing what you're doing, based on the way you currently design your day, based on the planner that you're currently using or the date book that you're currently using, what is working? What is working? You have appointments. You're on time. You know where you're supposed to be. What else? Because I want to ask you this. Is the way I think, the way I live, and the way I set goals, and the way I follow through, is that working? Is the way I think, the way I live, the way I set goals, and the way I follow through, is that consistent and is that working? Is the responsibility I take towards my goal, is that working? Do I buy into my own excuses? Is that working? 
What old limiting beliefs am I carrying with me into today? I think I'm not. I think I'm moving forward. But, but what am I carrying with me to today? Is that working? Let me say this as well. When you say, I just don't have time, I just don't have time to, you finish the sentence. I just don't have time to just finish the sentence. Guess what? I don't have time is code for I have too many distractions. I have too many distractions. What are your distractions? Well, we could call this a distraction, but I'm going to call it an investment, a good investment of 30 minutes of your day. <laughs> Uh, but when we get off, if you keep scrolling and you keep scrolling, then you go to Instagram and you keep scrolling and you keep looking at other people's lives and how they're living theirs and comparing yours and telling yourself how you just keep letting yourself down and you just keep not doing it and maybe it's not for you. If you keep going down that path, you're going to limiting beliefs, you're going to old excuses and you've got to understand that what I'm taking you here to the Design Your Life process and the 90-day possibilities, that the focus aspect of where I'm taking you is the key. It is the long-term key to making a great goal your reality. So is it, is it the absence of self-control and self-discipline that's driving your day? You know, all of those dim the vision. All of those things that I just said, your inability to follow through, your inability to set goals, to go the distance, because you buy into excuses, you have old limiting beliefs that you haven't overcome yet and stood on, um, telling yourself that you don't have time or that you don't have skill or that you don't have something on your side. Those dim the vision. And when the vision is dimmed, when the vision is dimmed, excuses get bigger and you let yourself more and more off the hook. But then something happens like Christmas and New Year's Eve and we are uber aware that another year has passed and we're uber aware that we are another year older. And then we become uber aware that we didn't do exactly what we said we were going to do in that year. And then we have to settle with that. So the question becomes, what can I live with? And then what can I live with? What can I live with? And what can I live with? See, it's, it's, really, it's really the same because what I want to do is to take the fog off your vision. I want to get rid of the blur. I want to invite a fresh focus. I want to in invite a fresh commitment. And I want to invite fresh hope that there is a way for you to accelerate your success starting here, starting now. This is the pre, this is just the pre-workshop. We're not even in the workshop. This is the pre-workshop. Okay, feel free to share this if you just joined me and Pamela Shaw. We're talking about the Design Your Life process and the Design Your Life Live Your Vision Planner. It's a 90-day segment where you take 90-day bites out of your uh, life and you, bam, you are intentional about where you're going and bam, we're gonna nail your success this year. So. Uh, the planner process is for you if you if you keep recycling old habits, getting old, undesirable results from your same old system. It could be for you. You know what? You could be using my planner but not using it right and still not be getting good results. So if you've got my planner and you're not getting results, then bang, refresh your course. You don't even need to get anything. You just need to get something here so that as we walk forward together, the planner could be you, the process could be you if you're seriously committed to an elevated specific outcome, a specific result, a promotion in 2017. The process could be for you if you already know a habit or two or a goal or two that you desperately want to claim victory over. And the planner and the process could be for you if you're willing to do it differently. Y'all, here's the reality. If the horse is dead, get off the horse. I mean, if it's not working, why keep just, I'm just going to keep trying. I'm just going to keep trying. You know, sometimes it's not just keep trying. Sometimes it's, whoa, weak, stop the madness. Let's refocus. What is it? What is it that has to change in order for you to get the result that you want? Most of us do not need more experience in bad choices or poor justification or lame excuses. We've, we've had, got plenty of experience in that. Uh, it, you know, staying comfortable. You know, I like the comfort of my home, okay? Um, I like my schedule, okay? Maybe I'm a little lazy, okay? You know, I'm just not sure, okay? You know, I, I, I'm just going to kind of keep it mediocre. I don't really, I don't want to stretch myself. I don't, I don't like feeling bad. I don't, okay. 
Success, big success is probably not for you. And guess what? That's not who's on here. I know, I know who's on here. Because you know what? You don't like staying comfortable. You'd much rather grow. You'd much rather grow and experience it. You would rather have the pain of change. And you would rather have the pain of growth than the pain of staying the same. You're somebody who knows God has called you to something great and something awesome in your life. And it's time to step over the line and battle that demon. And victory, you already have victory. You already know that you have the victory. Your schedule, you're willing to change it. You're willing to shake it up. You'd even be willing to do the five o'clock club if you really believed it would make a difference. I'm going to talk with you about that. You're not lazy. I know you're not lazy because you don't feel good when you're lazy. You don't feel good when you're not doing anything. You don't feel well when you're not making calls or being proactive or serving other people. You don't even feel good then. Uncertain? Who likes to be uncertain? Uncertain is not even attractive. Confident is attractive. Certain is attractive. I'm certain that I'm going in this direction. I'm confident of the call in this direction. Mediocre? That's not you. We don't do anything mediocre. I don't even like mediocrely fold towels. Now, I don't like the fold towels, but whoever folds them for me, I'm going to make sure that the, the roll, you know, bam, 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 rolls on the outside. I don't even like mediocre towels. Neither do you. And that's why you're on here today. My biggest regret and your biggest regret would be living below your God-given calling and your God-given talent. And you know what? We're not going to. We're going to step up to the occasion. We're going to step up to the call and we're going to make 2017 the wildest, most successful, most out there, most serving, most financially prosperous, most healthy, most connected, bringing other people along, giving other people hope year that you or I have ever had. How does that sound? You know what? It's not only possible, it's doable. And it's not only doable, it's gonna be your future. Okay, here's your homework. If you haven't shared it yet, go ahead and share this because they can go back and watch from the beginning. Even if you're just sharing it now, they can go back and watch from the start. So share this. December 26th, I'm gonna do at least one hour. And honestly, this could be a four hour deal, but I know that First of all, Facebook doesn't like four hours, <laughs> and I know you probably don't have four hours. And so I'll, I'll do some pro things on the private Facebook later. That's why I'd love for you to go to PamelaShaw.Pink and just register so that if we create a private group and you want to be a part of it, I can do you know snippets for people who are actually using the book then and give you tips along the way, and they can be short. But it's probably going to be about an hour and a half on December 26th because what I really want to work on is I want to do a Facebook Live for you, you and me for free, it's all, no hook, on goal setting and affirmations and daily habits. I want to hit those three areas. Goal setting, affirmations, and daily habits. But you've got to invest some time um, in thinking and praying before we come back together on December 26th. Okay? Deal? Are you willing to do some homework? So, if you're just joining me, I need your help. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you seven assignments, and I need you guys, somebody, I need you to write them in the note section. So whoever's on the keyboard and not taking notes, if you would write these in the note section, that would be really helpful for people who come in or somebody goes, wait, would you repeat that last one? So y'all work together here on this, and let's write these down. These are the seven questions that I want. I want you to buy a blank journal, just a blank notebook, spiral notebook. Go to Barnes & Noble, get a nice one. It doesn't matter to me. Just get a blank journal, okay? And I want you to write these seven questions down. And between now and December 26th, I'm going to ask you to please take at least an hour, maybe more, Maybe an hour a day. Maybe write them every day and just see what God continues to bring to your mind. But I really want to invite you to seriously think through these seven questions. And here they are, okay? Number one is kind of, I'm going to ask you first just one question, then I'm going to start numbering them, okay? What do you really want? If I'm going to ask you to write this down, what do I really want? What do I want more than anything? What do I really want? I want, you to, I want you to journal until you can't think of anything else. I want you to write and write and write. What do I really want? I want you to write and write and write and write. And here's the official number one, okay? That's the cover question. Here's the official number one. What would make 2017 your best year ever? What would make 2017 your best year ever? Number two. List 10 things you'd wish for in 2017. 
if these 10 things happened, you'd be like, oh, <laughs> what ten, list 10 things you'd really love to see happen in 2017. Number three, what is the one previous goal you've set that keeps eluding you? What's the one previous goal you've set that keeps eluding you? Number four, what's the one change you'd like to make inside yourself? What's the one change you'd like to make inside of yourself? Number five, five. What is one habit you want to master? What's one habit you want to master? Number six, what gift or talent would you like to grow? What gift or talent would you like to grow? And number seven, looking back on 2016, what's one piece of advice you'd like to give yourself? Number seven, looking back on 2016, what's one piece of advice you'd like to give yourself? Okay. I want you to write those seven things down and I want you to journal them and journal them and journal them. If you already have a planner, you'll be able to see where some of this goes in the beginning of your Design Your Life planner. Start putting it in there. Put it in pencil first until you get it the way you want it. Maybe play around in a notebook with it and, and um, um, you know get it all in your notebook before you put it in your planner. But I want you to really allow yourself to have the quiet time um, for you to start really praying. Ask God, Lord, give me the clarity of this vision. Give me your answers for this. Because what it says is when we delight ourselves in the Lord, he will give us the desires of our heart. So what does it mean to delight myself in him? Well, I think it means to just go before him and, and say, there is nothing more important than you in my life. There's nothing more important than you in my life. I want to live my life to glorify the life that you've given me. What does that look like? Look up Psalms 25, 4, and then I'm going to give you Psalms 32, 8. These are two of my just favorites, and I have them in my journal. And, I and I'm starting over in my journal, too. <laughs> I didn't get the front of that put together either. I'm starting over in my prayer journal as well as a new design planner. But it's really perfect time. I'm glad it worked out this way. But Psalm 32, 8 says, the Lord says, I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. I will guide you along the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and I will watch over you. That's Psalm 32, 8. The other one that's really similar to it is Psalm 25, 4. Look it up. Okay. Okay. So go to PamelaShaw.pink, put yourself on the mailing list. That way you'll be the first to know what time of day on the 26th. I'm working with my team, aka son who will be home, because <laughs> I want to film it in the other direction so that when I hold things up, it won't say life your design or you know backwards. <laughs> it will say forwards. So I need to flip the camera. And right now it's you and me for free. So maybe my son can help me out and flip the camera because I've got some great visuals planned for you. And, and I've taken some pages in the beginning of the uh, planner so I can walk through. But just so you know, like this is the first page of my planner. Like I write stuff in it. Can you see that? Here's what it says up here. And I'm going to give you some, give you a tip to go on. Until my one thing is done, everything else is a distraction. What's my one thing? So I've got that going on in here. And uh, man, this has been fun because like this is my year. Look, this is my year. This was January, January, February, March, April, May, June, <laughs> June uh, July, August, September, October, November. And look where we are. Woo, we are wrapping it up. They're almost done. But then the fresh one starts. And it's pretty, and it starts out clean. And you know what this says to me? Clean says, fresh start. Clean says, fresh start. So it's walking through the process. 
And when we get back together, when you've done that homework, and you're going to have to have done that homework when we come together because you're going to want a template for setting these goals. When you've got all this in your head and you know what it is and you've got it written down, whew, when you come together on the 26th, you're going to be ready to write these goals. And it's still you're still going to have 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31 to get your book set up, to get your appointment set up, to get your life set up, to get to create some habits and structure to go after this. I'm going to walk you through the process. And so, um, you know, I've been goal setting most of my life. Even as a little girl, my mother talked about, you know, be goal setting. And so um, I've been in this career for 30 years. And so I've been goal setting in this career for 30 years. I still need the process. I still need the strategy. I still need a system. Um, winning coaches don't stop doing their systems after they win. <laughs> they tighten their systems, they bring in new players, and they execute those same systems in order to get the same results, in order to get winning results. And so systems are a part of every winner's life. Let me give you some uh, closure here. Advice that I have taken through three decades that really went into uh, the designing your life um, process. And you know what? Go, if you haven't shared yet, go ahead and share this with your friends because this is good stuff. This advice I took uh, uh, throughout the years, throughout the years that I was telling you about, and um, I have put them into play in the design your life process. It was when I first came into Mary Kay and I started my Mary Kay business that I heard about the five o'clock club. For seasons of my life, including this one, I have embraced that. The five o'clock club and a specific bedtime with lights out. I gotta tell you something so funny. Oh my gosh, this is so funny. Do I have time? I don't even know what time it is. I've had this beautiful remodeled, you know, bedroom for years, the beautiful brown chocolate curtains and they're blackout curtains. Well, I didn't know anything really about blackout curtains until I got blackout curtains for Thomas in his Louisville studio because he works UPS. And so we were trying to get him some blackout curtains. He works midnight to six, so he sleeps during the day. So we got these fabulous blackout curtains. Well, in my bedroom, I've got these great shades. You know, they, the, they're they wooden and they clamp down, and so not a lot of light gets in. But the other night, I was exceptionally tired, and I had my Christmas lights on outside, and I could see just enough light, and I thought, I wonder if these close. Oh, stop it. So I close my brown curtains. I never wanted to mess them up at the bottom, so I never closed them at the top. Close them. I have three windows. It was so dark in there. I have slept so great since then. I've been in this house 22 years. Now, I haven't had, I haven't had those curtains 22 years, but is that hilarious? Okay. So, 5 o'clock club, bedtime, lights out. Affirmations. Affirmation cards. We're going to talk about affirmations on the 26th. I took that advice. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was stupid. I didn't, know, I didn't know how to make them. I didn't want to say them. I felt silly saying them. I took the advice of affirmations. Even back in the day, back in the 80s, what I was told to do was to buy a pillow sleeper. And in that pillow sleeper, you could make a, a cassette recorder go all night long, put the little thing in your ear, and you could hear your affirmations all night long. So I had daytime affirmations on cards that I would say I'd had them in the bathroom, and I had them uh, at my makeup area, and I had them on my treadmill, and I had them in my car, and I would say them over and over. And at night, I would put that pillow sleeper in. I let that habit go for years. I, I, so I'm getting to something. I, I embrace the habit of positive thoughts and words and positive people. I embrace the habit of turning off the TV and not listening to the rhetoric of anybody, uh, filling my head with their thoughts for me to choose my thoughts. I invested and created the habit of a quiet time and growth in my relationship with God and reading my Bible and learning His Word. I um, invested in taking the advice of writing out smart, clear-cut goals. Um, I invested in great workouts and changing them often enough, eating clean food to fuel my body. I took the advice of accountability and, and, the, and having people who have authority over me. I took the advice of tracking my activity so that I could pr predict results. I took the advice of showing up, showing up to events. This is an event. Showing up so that I could be inspired and I would go the next distance. And I took the advice of persevering when things weren't going well, just to keep persevering and doing what I knew was doing well. That is advice that I have taken. And that advice is built into the Design Your Life Planner. And I'm going to unload that for you next week. Now, what happened recently to me is that I recognized that I wasn't doing affirmations. You know, every once in a while I'll read a book or read something or hear something and I'll think, I wrote that. That's mine. <laughs> I did that. Did, did, did somebody take that? I mean, I wrote that. And then, you know, I realized there's just a lot of good stuff out there that other people do. But I, I listened to a YouTube. 
And it reminded me that I have said for years, you know, that you frame your day, you frame the top part of your day and the bottom part of your day with structure that create the habits for who you are and how you get things done. And I was reminded that I had let go of affirmations. And so I have once again brought back in the affirmation process. So I feel like when I give you that advice that I took and what we're gonna be talking about when we get together on the 26th, that I'm doing it from a fresh place of authentic integrity. And I'm super, super excited about it. There's a big difference between knowing and doing. We can know and go, I know, I know, I know. Okay, good, I'm glad you know. But knowing and doing are different. And sometimes it's the process, the planner, the accountability, the common conversation that needs to change. Because if I keep doing things the way that I'm doing them and getting the same results, sometimes it's just the tweak of the planner. Sometimes it's the tweak of the affirmations. Ian Pagan said, your first ritual that you do each day is your highest leveraged ritual by far because your mind is set as the context for your day. So we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about starting your day. So I've referenced this uh, framing your day for a while now, and we're going to talk about it more on December 26. But for now, work on the seven questions that I gave you. If you have specific questions you would like for me to address, please put them in the chat right now. Uh, go ahead and keep Write a question that you are sure you want me to cover, and I'll do my best uh, to cover that with you. So, um, you're gonna do your homework on the seven questions. Is that a deal? Do we have a deal? That when you come back, you'll have done your homework? I'm counting on it. If you don't have a planner and you'd like to get one, you can go to PamelaShaw.pink and get that. We are only shipping this week, Monday through Thursday, and we will not ship again until the 27th. So, um, uh, when orders come in before midnight, say tonight, they'll get shipped tomorrow. They come in before midnight tomorrow night, they get shipped Tuesday. Thursday's the last day we're shipping until the 27th again. So if you want or need one, uh, or need one for a friend or need one for a signing suffer, you can make that happen. Okay. God honors big dreams because big dreams honor God. God honors big dreams because big dreams honor God. So I pray that you have a most blessed Christmas with your family and loved ones. But as much as the hubbub invites gatherings and food and fellowship and traditions and um, even services and, and all of the things that we do this time of year to bring honor and glory to our Savior Jesus Christ, the one thing that I believe will honor him more than anything is for us to sit still in his presence and ask him to do an evaluation of our life we're already free from the burden and guilt and shame and sin. We can let the, all of that go because we're covered under grace. And grace is the great covering and grace is a beautiful thing. But I pray that you will take the time to get alone and truly invite into your mind, your heart, and your spirit a pathway. It's not going to be any easier just because you get the pathway. It's still going to be challenging. And I believe that together we can forge through a whole new pathway and make some really great things happen when we go the difference. So, you guys, thank you for being on. I'm honored that you would share any of your time of day with me today. God bless you. Have a very Merry Christmas, and I'll see you all.